one of those great flipped lectures from one of your awesome history teachers at Wyzetta West Middle School. Be sure to grab your notebook, a pencil or a pen, and get ready to take some notes. A reminder that screenshots don't count, and there will be a secret word that you need to add to the top of your notes to get full credit. A reminder that these notes can be used on the Skyward quiz, which is part of tonight's homework, and that you can also use them on the final. If you hadn't guessed already, our subject is the American Indian Civil Rights Movement. Let's go ahead and title a page that. The American Indian Civil Rights Movement. Learning Targets. Through a flipped lecture and Skyward quiz, I can explain the conditions that led to the American Indian Civil Rights Movement, describe the actions of the American Indian Civil Rights Movement and the obstacles they faced, and evaluate the achievements of the American Indian Civil Rights Movement. Let's first take a look at conditions. In the late 1700s and 1800s, American Indian tribes signed treaties with the U.S. government. Due to increased immigration, increased desire for farmland, and the discovery of natural resources like gold, the United States government began to break treaties with the American Indian tribes to gain this land. In some cases, they revised earlier treaties. For example, in 1868, the Fort Laramie Treaty was signed between the Sioux and the United States government to bring peace to the Great Plains. The Sioux agreed to settle on the Greater Sioux Reservation, which included the Black Hills, which were sacred to all three bands, the Ogallala, Lakota, and Dakota. When gold was discovered in the Black Hills, it led to conflict between the miners and the Sioux, and this resulted in the U.S. Army being called in and war. In the end, the Black Hills were taken over by the United States by 1877. By the 1880s, most tribes were placed on reservations with less desirable land. Sometimes tribes were forcibly removed to reservations, like when the Cherokee were removed with the Indian Removal Act. Other times they were placed there with a new treaty or were forced to accept treaties they did not like through war. If you take a look at the map, you can see the American Indian land in the dark gray in 1775. If you take a look below in 1894, you can see how much and how little land is actually left and how much had been taken by the U.S. government and U.S. settlers. Once on reservations, many tribes faced hunger, starvation, and disease as they struggled to make a living and learn how to live on reservations successfully. The U.S. began to treat American Indians as wards of the state and created the Bureau of Indian Affairs, or the BIA, to act as a go-between between the U.S. government and tribes. The BIA helped to run federal programs like education and aid on reservations. More land was taken away when the Dawes Act was passed in 1887. The Dawes Act attempted to teach white ownership values to American Indians by dividing up reservation lands among the families of, a tri of the tribe. Land that was left over was sold, and some American Indians sold their land as they did not understand land ownership and how it worked, and it clashed with traditional tribal values. As a result, much land was lost. Two-thirds of land held in 1887 was lost by 1935. In another attempt to teach American Indian white values, Indian boarding schools were created. Indian boarding schools, similar to earlier missionary schools, were created by the Bureau of Indian Affairs, or the BIA, in the 1890s to 1950s to help American Indian children assimilate or fit into white culture. American Indian children were taken from their families and placed into residential schools. They were not allowed to speak their native language, wear their hair in traditional way, or wear traditional clothing. All of this was changed so that they would fit in with white culture and they had limited contact with their families. They were punished for continuing to follow traditional tribal beliefs. American Indian culture was not represented in the curriculum or in the staff, and as a result, some American Indian children felt out of touch with their native culture. By the 1960s, conditions on reservations and off reservations for American Indians were dire. In 1961, the U.S. Commission on Civil Rights decided that poverty and deprivation are common for American Indians, and that American Indians suffered mistreatment by law enforcement officials on and off the reservation. Unemployment was ten times higher than the rest of the United States for American Indians. Life expectancy was 20 years lower for American Indians, and suicide rates were 100% higher than the white population of the United States. There was a high dropout rate for American Indian high school students. 
The time had come for the American Indian Civil Rights Movement to address some of these problems. The Red Power Movement Actions and Obstacles Notice that the Red Power Movement is using words like the Black Power Movement, so you can get a few guesses. The first major rumblings of the American Indian Civil Rights Movement occurred in 1961. In 1961, the National Congress of American Indians met in Chicago. Sixty-seven American Indian nations attended, and they sought to unite and seek control of federal programs on reservations, like education and aid, that had been typically run by the BIA. Additionally, they wanted to restore treaty rights, including fishing, hunting, mineral, and land rights. A National Indian Youth Council was formed to emphasize pride in American Indian heritage and accomplishments, as well as support the goals of the National Congress of American Indians. At the conference, they wrote the Declaration of Indian Purpose, which was delivered to Kennedy and became part of Johnson's policy for the American Indians. Johnson established a National Council on Indian Opportunity to check on the state of American Indians and used federal funds to support American Indians. The National Congress of American Indians had worked within the political framework to gain some changes in the U.S. Indian policy. In 1968, the American Indian Movement, or AIM, was founded in Minneapolis, Minnesota. AIM was created to try and make the public aware of police wrongdoings and brutality in American cities. There were higher arrest rates for American Indians and more instances of brutality. AIM had many goals. They also fought for social justice and wanted to protect treaty rights that were being ignored. Additionally, AIM wanted to inspire cultural pride, like the Black Power Movement with their own Red Power Movement. Education had also been a focus of AIM as they sought to include American Indian culture, history, and language in the curriculum. Some of AIM's protests have included seizing a replica of the Mayflower on the anniversary of the Pilgrims' landing at Plymouth Rock, occupying Mount Rushmore because treaty rights gave the Black Hills to the Sioux technically, and protesting the use of American Indian mascots for team sports. Here you can see them marching on Columbus Day to protest it, and you can see the symbol of the American Indian movement or power movement. From November 20th, 1969, to June 11, 1971, American Indians who called themselves the Indians of all tribes occupied Alcatraz Island. The American Indians wanted to draw national attention to the broken treaty and land rights and problems that American Indians face. They wanted to establish an Indian culture and education center. They ironically offered to buy the island for $24 in beads and cloth, the price that had been paid for Manhattan Island earlier. During this time, there was a lot of media coverage. Despite not gaining Alcatraz Island in the end, the occupation was successful in inspiring American Indians and fueling the Red Power Movement. The occupation gained support from celebrities and drew huge amounts of attention. Occupations and protests broke out across the nation. Here in the Twin Cities, the Twin Cities Naval Air Base was occupied by American Indians. The secret word is Fred Flintstone. Write this at the top of your notes or somewhere in them to get credit for your homework. Again, the secret word is Fred Flintstone. In the autumn of 1972, eight American Indian groups, including the American Indian Movement, decided to travel to Washington, D.C., protesting along the way to draw national attention to American Indian issues. Before going, they drew up a 20-point position plan in Minneapolis. It focused on treaties, rights from the past, and the process of making new ones. Land reform, including the restoration of 110 million acres, and abolishing the Bureau of Indian Affairs altogether. The trail began in California and planned to arrive in Washington just before the presidential election. When they arrived in D.C., they occupied the Bureau of Indian Affairs building as they saw it as theirs. The occupation lasted for a week. During the occupation, the BI building was vandalized, but national attention had been gained. The Nixon administration responded by negotiating with American Indians, but there was little movement on the 20 points. The occupation movement of the American Indian Civil Rights Movement tapered after the American Indian Movement's Occupied Wounded Knee, the symbolic site of a U.S. Army massacre, to draw attention to corruption and terrible conditions on Pine Ridge Reservation. The occupation of Wounded Knee ended with a shootout between federal authorities and AIM. Achievements. American Indians made serious gains 
in achieving the moment's goals. First, they gained citizenship rights in the 1968 Indian Civil Rights Act, which guaranteed the same legal and voting rights of U.S. citizens to American Indians. This act also protected the right of self-rule on reservations. The right to control education for American Indians was granted in the 1974 Indian Self-Determination and Education Assistance Act. This has led to the inclusion of American Indian language in curriculum, history, and culture in schools, as well as magnet schools here in the Twin Cities, which serve American Indians. In the 1970s, American Indian treaty rights have been recognized by the courts. American Indians have successfully sued for land treaty rights. They began by creating organizations to provide legal aid to tribes and aid tribes who fought treaty violations. In 1971, Alaskan Indians settled land disputes with the government and received $962 million in 40 acres. In 1980, the Supreme Court decided in favor of the Sioux for the Black Hills and awarded the Sioux $106 million to the bands. In the 1980s, American Indian tribes have focused on trying to gain other treaty rights. In Minneapolis, tribes have protested for fishing rights by holding fish in on Cedar Lake in Minneapolis. Some tribes have received hunting and fishing rights guaranteed in treaties, and gaming and gambling rights have also been guaranteed in the courts. It's now time for you to go to Skyward and sign in to take the Skyward quiz. Don't forget to use your notes to help you complete it.